the Yorobun Se Arduino Drogunde. So we are going to start an uh, Arduino. Uh, Microcontroller. So this is called as microcontroller. Uh, Arduino Do you know how to use Arduino? If, if there is anyone who don't know how to use Arduino. Namun Arduino Araya. 기본적으로 약간만 쓸수 있습니다. <웃음> 기본이라 하면 자율주행 로봇 정도는 돌립니다. <웃음> <웃음> 그 <웃음> 어, 살짝 좀 상향된 것 같긴 하지만 약간은 사용할 수 있습니다. 혹시 그러면 일단 엑스 아, 됐어. 근데 이게 아마 그냥 모르는 사람을 위해서 그럼 빨리 그냥 훅 그냥 정리만 써버리만 하고 갈게요. 그래서 그 병문은요 어느 정도 쓸줄 알아요? 저 예전에 기본 센서랑 다루는 건 해봤는데 오래돼가지고 많이 까먹었어요. 아 그럼 체크랑 아까 뭐 우진이는? 네 저도 연구 활동 할때몇번 다뤄봤습니다. Okay, let's talk about some fact check. Okay, um, raise your hands if you know about. It. So I know how to turn a single I do. I know how to blink on R D. 손 들어 보세요. 그러니까 그 블링크 나할줄 안다. 손 들어 보세요. 깜빡깜빡. 그 LED 말씀하시는 LED, 건가요? 블링크 할수 있다. 병무 이거 아직 할줄 몰라요? 네. 아, 뭔가 아 저게 손이구나. <웃음> 그러면 알두이노 페이딩, 알두이노에서 아날로그 인풋 아웃, 아날로그 아웃풋 쓸수 있다. I know how to run Arduino uh, analog out. Analog out 쓸수 있다. 지금 병무도 손든 거죠? 저안 들었습니다. 아, 아니요. 지금 병무한테 손이 하나, 그 아이콘이 하나 들어져 있는데 그게, 그게 말하겠습니다의 손인가? 아닌가? 없어졌나? 아, 아니구나, 아니구나. 아, 오케이, 오케이. 아니. 화면 에러. 그 아누 아날로그 아웃 쓸줄 알아요? Do you know how to use 아, 아날로그 아웃? 아두이노를 다뤄본 지 하도 오래돼서 지금 아는 게 거의 없는 것 같습니다. 아 그래요? 아 그러면 일단 그러면 그냥 그냥 빨리 한번 훅 지금 한번 so I'll just kind of quickly go through it. 음, um, 네. Okay. 여러분들 so Arduino ecology is going um, really seriously, really going really nice. Um, so if you want to learn Arduino, um, so, okay, so in on our Facebook, so I just upload, so just simply if it is for learning purpose, you don't even really need to buy any Arduino these days. So I upload some content. So I will Okay, so um okay, so it, this is now recording. So if you go to the Facebook, um if you go to the so today, this week's um tutorial. Uh, there's a link for Arduino simulation tools. And if you go there, uh, there are a lot of uh, Arduino simulator softwares are listed. And then among them, uh, Tinkercad is actually quite useful. So Tinker to use Tinkercad, um, you can just go to Tinkercad or there's a, probably there's a link. So you can just simply uh, click the link. Uh, this one is called the Tinkercad circuit. It is free. Uh, you need to log in using your probably Google or social network ID. Uh, for example, if I try to log in, I just kind of uh, try to my personal account and then I'll just use my Google account. 
그 들어가면 so you can simply uh, you can see this kind of uh, intro screen and there are different types of software one is 3d design the second one is circuit and cut blocks and some learning portal among them you need to switch to circuit uh, i think i should change it to language setting as english let me just change it coming back to Tinkercad. Okay, so I will switch to circuit. And if you go to circuit, uh, you probably see some of the, my previous uh, files. And to start one, just click create new circuit. And this is basic interface of uh, Arduino circuit. So simply you can drag on Arduino board here. So simply you can drag and drop and then this one says, uh, you, uh, I am using Arduino Uno R3, and then let's say, and then name is one, so it's okay, so I just let it there. Uh, and then a uh, little bit about some in the interfaces. If you check about this code, you can actually uh, scratch like block coding samples are here. And you can change this one to blocks, to text or blocks and text. So I'll switch to blocks and text to show you uh, also coding. And this one is actually amazing. You can actually, you don't need to, you don't really need to write any code. Uh, actually, you can actually use this block coding uh, to do almost anything with Arduino. And then, uh, so here, so that's kind of the basic interface. If I just show you quickly, so let's say that the kind of the default coding is say that set built-in LED to high and wait one second and set built-in LED to low and wait one second and that's it. And if you see the code part, uh, there are setup part and loop part. So setup is just run only once and loop part, it'll repeat. And then Arduino is basically is kind of using this microcontroller and microcontroller actually uh, to learn about microcontroller, actually it's always better to check about their data sheet. So for Arduino, the microcontroller installed on it is actually at mega, at mega, I think it's 328 series. So if you check about at mega 328, uh, you can actually check and then I will search with PDF then this one is the um, the manual of this microcontroller, and then this is simple chip like this would simply cost less than four or five dollar. It actually has every information you need. So this one is very long file. So this one is more than one hundred pages long uh, data sheet for this product. So it's that it is 8-bit ABR microcontroller with 32K bytes in system, but it's a memory, 32K memory inside. And something useful information you need to check is that this one is a low power, high performance 8-bit microcontroller. And it has RISC risk architecture. And then it has 131 instructions, meaning that you can only run this 131 commands, that's it. And it has general purpose uh, registers and blah, 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 blah. And something important <clears throat> uh, is actually it has six PWM channels. Uh, what does a PWM means is actually it, it's a pins that it works like an analog pin and all other pins work like simply a distal pin, which you can simply turn it on and off. And it has eight channel 10 bit ADC means this one is analog to digital converter. So PWM basically means uh, there are six pins that you can actually turn on LED. You can actually fade on LED. So basically you can maximum, you can add eight LEDs to this one. And this uh, eight channel 10 bit ADC is, it can actually use some sensors 
and can receive analog signal and convert it to a digital. That's what it means. And then basically it uses I2C uh, communication, meaning that this will use a serial interface, which is, meaning that it, it will use this communication method to the outside device, such as computer. And those are actually something you need to know. And then actually something, another important thing is that this one operation voltage is 2.7 to 5.5 volts. And this one is temperature range is minus 40 to 125. So what basically what it means, and then also speed grade is, uh, you can actually use this microcontroller with low voltage when you use it eight megahertz clock. And, but if you wanna use 16 megahertz clock, you need higher voltage. And what it means is you can use it almost anywhere in the world. However, some place like car in a summer, meaning that this microcontroller will break it down because the maximum temperature it can uh, tolerate is actually 125. So that's something important. But this one is for advanced user. If you want to know about general Arduino specification, just go to arduino.cc. Then you can actually go to hardware. Then there are a lot of many products. So you can actually select depending on any additional uh, features you may need. And one of the basic Arduino we are going to have is actually this one. And this Arduino is actually composed of three different parts. And what they are, so basically um, what it have is actually, so do you see this left side of this product? This one is basically uh, make it, uh, it's more easier to connect to microcontroller, but this is not really sequential. So basically each pin uh, let's just say that each this picture is better. So these are these pins are simply connected internally to microcontroller pins. So basically, you are, you can use jumper wire to connect electrically to this microcontroller. That's it. And these six pins are the one I explained that this one is I 2 C communication. So you can actually, basically a long time ago when there was no Arduino was developed, you may or may not know, at that time we use AVR Dude <laughs> uh, or we called it AVR Dragon. So AVR Dragon is a kind of a communication device that connect microcontroller and a computer. So we can actually upload, we can write a code using a personal computer and then upload it to a microcontroller and let my controller work uh, independently. And there are so many uh, kind of tools like this. And basically Arduino is a simply a kind of like a inbuilt product that has this programmer inside of with a microcontroller. That part is actually this part. So do you see there is a microcontroller here? And do you see this little black one here? This is another actually microcontroller that handles the communication between a computer and a microcontroller using USB uh, cable. And then I need to show you some another of variations. So Arduino, actually, there are a lot of uh, Arduino copy version. So let's kind of take a look at all those products. So Arduino has a so-called clone. So this one is called a pin type microcontroller. And this one is SMD type, meaning that surface mount device type of microcontroller. Basically these two things are the same thing, but this one simply uh, has a small, so-called a small size or small form factor. However, basically these two are the same thing. And these days, this is smaller chip is 
actually cheaper than the other and this is much easier to purchase it however this one is kind of disappearing now this is actually more difficult to buy these days and as you see that um if you see the left side of it this is a small microcontroller this is also smd type a small microcontroller that only handles the communication between a computer and a microcontroller using usb and you probably see that this looks a little bit different from this one so actually many copied version so here's actually another things so there's a, a Arduino with uh, pin type microcontroller. And this one is another tiny little version of microcontroller. Basically, these are all AT at mega328 or A328. And then as you see that, the if you see kind of left side of it, you probably see that uh, this also uses different communication uh, microcontroller. And actually, this is the most the one the most popular phone in these days, which is a clone, which is as cheap as just one microcontroller price. And actually, you and then actually this communication chip is not that popular. And the Arduino IDE, which is if you go to Arduino, you are going to use the Arduino software, does not support it actually because this is clone version. So you need to actually download and install a driver for this communication uh, chip, uh, that's it. And then you can find a lot of online tutorial how to download and uh, install this uh, communication driver to use this clone. And another, and, and then this is almost the same and they're quite common is actually this lower left corner. Uh, this one is simply a power converter that kind of offer, allow you to use from, I think five volt to, actually if you, if you take a look at it, oh, you can actually use seven volt to 12 volt, volt DC voltage. And this one is actually voltage regulator, meaning that whatever voltage it'll come, it'll simply convert it to roughly 5.5 volt. So this microcontroller has a stable power source from uh, any uh, voltage outside. So kind of, you can think of it that a microcontroller, this Arduino is a product that has communication device and power adapter in one package, that's it. So the main key, so uh, what does that mean is that uh, to run an IoT device or microcontroller device actually the smallest component or the bare component you really need is just this microcontroller, that's it. And that's what we'll, I will cover probably in next week. Okay, so going back to uh, this uh, Tinkercad. So let's kind of, when that end, when you take a look at about it, uh, something critical thing for you is actually understanding the diagram of Arduino. So if you go to our, this kind of product page of Arduino in arduino.cc webpage, the most critical thing you need to understand is this pinout. So here, as you see that you see red color, orange color, and yellow color. And what it means is that each pin can be used in three different functions. So, but some other things, which is black and red is related to power source. And it, you can actually only use these pins for power supply. And actually these five volt, 3.3 volt is actually connected internally to this power adapter part. And if you take a look at about this one, you probably, the first, the innermost layer, you are going to see that something D19, D18 or D1, D2. And so simply, basically what it means is just simply this one can be used uh, port number and that's it. And then 234 is actually it pins number and that's pretty much that's it. And if you take a look at about here, it says A0 to A5. 
And what it means is these pins are actually are dedicated pins to be used to uh, use so-called ADC, which is analog to digital converter, meaning you can actually use these six pins to connect any sensors. And actually sensors are divided into two different categories. So first thing is you can get some val analog values from sensors and actually you are going to connect those sensors to these pins. However, all these pins from D14 and D0 to D14, you can also use them as input device and output device. So actually you, for the, all those pins are actually so-called dual functions. So each pin can be used either as an input device or output devices. So that's why at the beginning of your code, what you are going to do is that let this microcontroller knows that I want to use particular pin as input or output. Otherwise, uh, this microcontroller will remember whatever previous definitions or previous code and it will follow whatever previous code. And to avoid that, we just say that, oh, I'm going to use this LED pin as output. So kind of that's the purpose of this setup. Uh, and, and go back to this one. So P, you probably can see PC0 and PC5 and your PD0 and PD7, PB1. So what does that mean is you can actually group all these pins into four different port. So this one is say that port D. So kind of you can think of it, this one is the fourth port. So microcontroller from the head, this one is port A or port B or port C or port D. Actually, we need to check uh, by looking their PDF. However, what this means is that all oh, these are all connected to port D0 to port D7. However, these pins are connected to port B0 to port B5. And this means port C5 and this one is also port C0. And then this is a uh, power related pin. And then uh, these two particular pins are called as transmittance or receive. And basically these are connected to serial communication uh, which is connected to this TX and RX LED. Meaning if a signal comes in or comes out this LED will blink. And this SCL, SDA, SCK, CIPO, COPI, or SS, all these pins are actually uh, connected to these six pins. And these six pins are actually one of the uh, traditional communication, which is I2C communication. And these six pins are used. If you don't know, if you are not using this USB connector, and this one is actually a conventional way of connecting the AVR dude or AVR communicator to your PC. So basically this one was a kind of dedicated uploading and downloading uh, pins. So these are actually basic um, uh, kind of like uh, compositions or components of the Arduino. Well, any questions about the hardware setting of this Arduino so far? Okay, so again, you can use actually maximum six sensors because microcontroller has six ADC analog to DC, uh, analog to digital converter. And also at the same time, you can actually connect uh, six uh, analog uh, output pins, which is also called as PWM. Uh, meaning actually this one is actually digital to analog converter. This one is analog to digital, but this one you can think of it digital to analog. So you can have six ADC and six DAC, how you can think of it. And all these things are, you can actually check from the Arduino website. If you go back, if so if you go back to here and Arduino, 
And actually, all these things are described here in uh, feature. And then this is what uh, all the kind of uh, basic things are this was talking about. And then if you check about data sheet, this will connect to the PDF that, uh, that we worked on. So basically this is the same thing that we see uh, from the, uh, this uh, Atmega chipset. Uh, just this one is just a little bit more friendly version of those um, microcontroller description, that's it. All right, so let's go, uh, this one is uh, kind of a little bit basic things about our, our, our microcontroller. And let's go back to this blink. Uh, so here's kind of, you can, I just quickly go through uh, about how to use Arduino. You need to know basically uh, five things. Uh, what are they? The first thing is digital output, which you are, you can use all these pins here, which is you can use a device that simply turn it on and off. So this was known as digital output. Basically here, uh, all the kind of uh, functions you are going to use is basically this code, which is you can select any pin here and you can simply set it as high or low. So me meaning that this one is all related to digital output function. And also you can use analog function. And so, but there are only six pins available then actually you can actually change a value from zero to 255. So as you see that the left side is pin number, the right side for digital output, the name of the function is digital right, and it's analog output, and its, it's function name is analog right, right, and this is zero, you can change it to zero to 255. And another two things, which is related to sensors. So you can actually, you can also use uh, digital sensors, meaning that a sensor simply give you true or false value. For example, if there's a fire, true or false. There is a, is it bright, true or false? Or is it too high or is it high, is it, is it too cold, true or false? So it's, it, this is kind of known as digital sensors. And then uh, digital sensors uh, is actually digital pin. If you kind of, you can actually use all the certain pin and actually the value of this one is always true or false. However, if you use this one read analog pin, basically you do the function for digital read is digital sensor is digital read and the output is true or false or high or low, low, or if you actually use analog read and then only you can use these six pins only and the value you are going to get is zero to 1023. Uh, basically the resolution is twice, actually four times higher than analog read, analog write. Again, okay? analog write, you can use a value between zero to 255 and for analog read, you will get a value from zero to 1023. So here is a actual problem. Okay, the value from I got from analog sensor is zero to 1023. However, the output that I can use is zero to 255. How can we solve this issue? 한국말로 설명하면 여러분 센서 값은 0에서 1023까지 받을 수 있는데 여러분이 아날로그 값이든 아웃풋을 쓸수 있는 값은 0에서 255까지 밖에 안 되는 거예요. 요거 간단하게 풀려면 어떻게 하면 되죠? 되게 쉽죠? 보안 공대 여러분. <웃음> 요거 어떻게 하면 되죠? 아, 이 문제 어떻게 풀면 되지? 랜덤하게. 바로 나누면 될것 같습니다. 아, 맞아요. 나누면 되는데, 나누는 것보다 더 쉬운 것도 있어요. 그걸 갖다가, yes, you can divide the input by four. Then actually the value, the maximum value 1023 to you can match it to 255. But what happened if you want to reverse that? So for example, if the input value, when an input value is zero, you want to use 255 and the input value is 1023, you want to use zero. How, 이거 어떻게 쉽게 하면 되지? 
여러분 그 이런 교차 교차 교차로 하는 거죠. 이거 어떻게 쓰면 되죠? 여러분이 이제 순차적으로 if you kind of match them sequentially, meaning that if you want to connect the zero input zero to output zero, you can just connect it. If you want to connect 1023 to 255, you just divide by four. But if you want to reverse it, how can you do that? 뭐 어떻게 하면 되죠, 여러분? So if you want to connect zero to 255, if you want to connect 1023 to zero, 이거 어떻게 교차로 연결하는 수학 간단한 게 있죠? 요거는 조금 어려워 보이니까 똘똘해 보이는 친구한테 <웃음> 우진이? <웃음> 이거 어떻게 하면 되지? 간단하게 수학으로 그래서 요거 하기 싫잖아요 So you don't want to develop any mathematical formula So here's the, 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 this is a tool a convenient function that you can use it. So, uh, so map is connect zero to range to, so this map function is actually mapping those two values, zero to 1023 to zero to 255. So as you see here, uh, zero to zero and 23, 1023 to zero is, zero is matched to, to 1023. And another value, let's say 255, is connect, I will have to use this one a little bit later and the maximum to 23. And there's another occasion, which is known that even though uh, when you actually use a sensor, uh, those values are highly specific. What I mean by is that each sensor does not give you a kind of evenly distributed value from zero to 1023. For example, if you use a light sensor, if you use a light sensor in the outside, a values are, the values will be different when you use it during summer and when you use it during winter time. 이해 되죠? 여름에는 더 밝을 거고, 겨울엔 어두울 거예요. And the value, the light sensor values, when you use it exterior or interior. 그러니까 여러분들, 밖에는 sunlight이 나오니까 굉장히 밝을 것이고, 내부에서 라이트 센서 없으면 값이 어두워요. Because the daylight from the sun make your sensor value very high. However, if you use the light sensor in interior, no matter how bright lighting you will have, naturally it is way much lower than the sun value. So when you use a certain sensor in certain environment, you need to figure out what are the common average value that you will get? And what is the maximum value of your sensor? And what is the minimum value of your sensor? And you are going to match these three values, average, or sometimes you're going to use mean, average mean and maximum and minimum. And then you are going to map these specific values to the output devices using this math function. And then and these are actually, if you know all these five categories, so you need to know the digital output, analog output, and digital input, and digital, what did I say? So let's say, okay, let's make it simple. For, so basically you have two things, input and output. And each input and output are divided into two categories. One is analog or digital. So you have for input, you will have analog input and digital input. For the output, you will have analog output and digital output. And to match all these four different relationships, you are going to use map function. However, all these things only happen be because the kind of the Arduino's overall capability is limited by its hardware setting. It means that it only works. What did I explain to you? What is the hardware range that you can use it? It only Arduino only works between zero to 
5.5 volt and temperature is minus 40 to maximum 125 Celsius. So this one is your hardware boundary. So here's the question. What happened if you want to control the kind of light setting, which is actually runs on 220 volts, or if you are using LED light, that, that or, in a, or light in a car that work in zero to 12 volt, how can you match the, the range, the voltage range you can use in uh, Arduino is zero to five volt, but the actual physical world, the, the electricity that we are going to use is zero to 220 volt. How can you combine this physical mapping? 이거 어떻게 하는지 아는 사람? Is there anyone who control 220 volt lighting using Arduino? 다들 눈만 뻥뻥 뻥뻥. <웃음> 아 다들 눈이 이쁘기도 하지. 눈만 뻥뻥 뻥. So uh, in that so kind of I talk so this is and then in that case if it is digital you can actually use relay. A uh, relay is a physical sensor that you can use you can control this is this is basically um uh, electric sensor that the activity of switch can be controlled by digital output however it actually connects electric circuit meaning that basically either connect or disconnect on uh, electric flow so actually the output can be any voltage but actually the, you need to also check the hardware setting of relay. So for example, one of the common relay that you are going to use, actually there are, there are many, many different types of relay. So most of it is actually have a, a specification that have a maximum range about 30, 300 volt or somewhere. Because your home electricity is divided by, it used to be your home, your house has 110 volt, now probably it is all changed to 220 volt, but if you work in the United States or Europe or Japan, it probably it is still 100 volt or 110 volt. However, if you're going to your lab or if you go to the basement, still there are other voltage which is work with 360 volt. And if you take a look at about the package of relay, this one says that it will work with 10 ampere and 250 volt uh, maximum. And then the input is actually 10 ampere and 30 volt maximum. So kind of you can check the kind of actual physical mapping by checking the package of your relay. And then for your sensors, uh, also let, you, need to, you need to depend on the specification of the, each sensor, for example, one of the most popular sensors that you are going to use is ultra, uh, it is called as distance sensor. And then if you take a look at about a sharp is one of the most popular one. And then you can check uh, their sensor guideline. Uh, let's say this one is another popular sensor ultrasonic. And always when you work on this, so-called electronic devices or electric devices, always you need to depend on their data sheet. So let's take a look at about data sheet of this document. And there is also a PDF data sheet of this ultrasound. And when you're working on this Arduino, this data sheet is always the most important one that will decide the success and failure of your prototype. So let's say that this ultrasonic sound ranging module provides two centimeter from two centimeter to 400 centimeter non-contact measurement, meaning that this sensor only work between two centimeter to four meter. So you probably realize that, ah, this sensor only work this range. So meaning that you cannot detect any object which is closer to two centimeter to the sensor or such as this large classroom area 
the object is far away from four meter, then you cannot really use it. But that's not really true so far. One more thing. So this one uses five volt supply. And then actually these are all depending, dependent on the product. Some, and, and they are in semi-conductor semi devices world, so-called microcontrollers. The majority of Arduino microcontrollers and sensors are work on five volt. That's why Arduino has, Arduino has five volt supply. And these days, another majority of sensors work with which voltage do you think? Based on the Arduino description I explained to you 10 minutes ago. What kind of voltages are offered in Arduino product? If you go to Arduino, out you see that there are two voltages are offering from Arduino one is five volt and the, the other is a 3.3 .3 volt meaning that many electronic devices are built around working with five volt or 3.3 .3 volt I go and then another thing you need to take a look at about is so, uh, okay, so this is kind of over uh, big picture <laughs> about the Arduino environment, but actually relatively, these are relative. Uh, uh, okay, uh, another thing. So I told you, uh, when we talk about Arduino, it has analog sensors and it has digital sensors. And then when you take a look at about light sensor, something like this is actually, this is another light sensor. Not that great one. If you take a look at about light sensor and Arduino, you probably see that sensors are divided into two categories. Can you identify those two categories? So this is something important when you purchase your product. So again, you are going to buy a lot of electronic devices to work with Arduino and you need to check what is the working voltage so you need to check whether this is working at 12 volt or five volt or 3.5 volt. And then you need to check about whether this device is, is working with other stuff, which is you probably see that this one is actually a light sensor. So all sensor require to work. So this is electric devices. This is an electric device that work with electricity. So most of sensors have at least two pins, one is ground and the other is VCC. Basically, you are going to connect five volt, either 3.3 .3 volt and ground is connected to ground. And probably this pin has probably out and this one will be connected to one of those, one of two pins. Can you tell me what are these two pins? Either you can connect this sensor into in form of digital to analog 중에서 꽂는 것이 아닌가요? 맞아요. So okay, so I'm trying to help you. So when you see the uh, this kind of microcontroller world or digital world, you have to think about one thing. Is this digital or analog? So if it is digital, so if it is digital devices, it can be either digital input or digital output. You need to connect it to digital pins, digital ports. If it is analog devices, either it could be analog output or analog input. You need to connect it to analog pins of Arduino. So if you, I mean, it really depends on the product. However, 
if there is only one pin, it probably, it will be analog pin. So you simply connect this out to uh, AD, one of the ADC port in Arduino here. But if you see that there are two pins, such as if I take a look at uh, this one, I'm, uh, I'll try to find a more cleaner image. Okay, so you see that this, this device has VCC and ground, meaning that five volt or three volt to, so actually this one works with 3.5 volt and five volt. So you can work either 3.3 volt or five volt. So you can connect the VCC either one of 3.3 or five and ground to ground. And actually it has two pins. One is A0, the other is D0, meaning that it can produce analog signal or digital signal. So, how can you use this A0 and D0 differently? And one of the reason why this one has A0 and D0 means this one has another microcontroller or semiconductor device that can control the sensor value to the output. And actually, if a sensor is, has a digital pin, meaning that it has inside it has a microcontroller inside to handle any analog input to digital output and you can actually connect to digital to digital then how do you use this one differently and what is the benefit of using what is the benefit or the benefit or what is the advantage or disadvantage of using digital sensors can you Okay, let's kind of, I'll give you some easier question first. Uh, what is the, which one do you want to prefer? Analog sensors or digital sensors? If you're a beginner. Maybe analog sensor. Why? Um, because it is more simpler than digital sensor. Yeah, that, that's totally makes sense. Uh, analog sensor is actually much, sure, much more intuitive for beginners because it's just simply produce the value between zero and two, 10, 23. So actually you can actually use it by mapping. It. But where do you wanna, well, when do you want to use a digital sensor? What is the benefit of digital sensors? Oh, okay, let's think about one other thing. What is the disadvantage of analog sensor? We put that. Okay, then let's think about it. What is the, the difference between analog sensors and digital sensors? Uh, this is the really the key. 이게, 이게 여러분들이 꼭 이해되는 것 중에 하나예요. 우리 우리 we live in a analog we, we traditionally we live in analog world, but due to the so many IT devices, now we are converting or transporting ourselves from analog world to digital world more and more. So now, what is the difference between analog devices and digital devices? What is the main key difference lie in these two different devices? Oh, I, I know analog sensor signal may be continuous, but digital, sense, digital signal is not continuous. Yeah, that's another really kind of the key uh, property of it. More and then, can you just say that thing more intuitively? So why these? Why these are continuous? What does they mean by continuous and discontinuous electric things? Are what are the key differences between these two? You go
그게 뭐죠? 뭐 이제 키 디퍼런스 비트윈 애널로그 디바이스 something inside of analog devices and something inside of digital sensors or digital devices. What is the key difference? Why will come? <laughs> 다 아는데 다 아는데 말을 못 하겠어. I know, I know, but I cannot tell. <laughs> right? You you all feel that the difference, but we cannot really specifically tell that what what is it? 그 뭐죠? 차이가 뭐죠? 여기 제일 중요한 거예요. 아날로그 시그널은 아날로그 시그널 is electric itself. The power differences, current differences is directly goes into a device. But digital signal, what is a digital signal? This, what is a digital device? It's a signal. There is a huge difference. So, so it's a analog device is actually you are electrically really connecting one device to the another device, but digital is actually you are decoupling it first, and then actually you are reconnected using a signal. And then of course it is in form of electricity. However, it is simply electrified numbers. That's the huge difference between these two. So what is the then what is the benefit what and what is the benefit of using digital digital devices? That's a huge benefit of it using this. That's why every device is even so. The, if you if you live in an old building, your electric switch is will be electrically one ten volt is. Continuously on and off. So probably you don't hear that, but actually, if it is old, you will see spark. You will hear some noise, and then you probably hear. And then the older devices, if you use long time, it will melt it down or break down because of this high voltage and heat and all the electric shock. But digital devices do not have that because it is simply very low voltage and just it's a basically it's a symbols. And there's another huge benefit of using. So that's why, such as this kind of a new building like this one, even if you see mechanical, even if you see any mechanical electric switch, actually inside of it, it's actually computer device inside installed. And it's simply the electric mechanical switch. It look like mechanical. Actually, there's a sensor inside of it. Sometimes, and then actually, it's a simply sense the signal. From one electric switch to the another, not only really electricity is connected at all, and what and there's a two two benefit of using it. And let's see, let's talk about what is the most important benefit of using digital device. In, in computer programming, I believe that you all know computer programming well. This is known as encapsulation. What is the benefit of using? Digital world, and I say encapsulation. And what is the benefit of digital devices? I got it in the budget. Then, 혹시 digital device와 아 digital signal과 analog signal의 차이를 그 한국어로 한 번만 더 설명해 주시면 안 될까요? 여러분 아마도 말씀은요 전압과 전류가 디렉트리하게 연결이 돼요. 그럼 5 v 7 v 1 2 v the voltage changes are directly connected to another device. 이게 무슨 소리냐면 만약에 무슨 일이 있어서 아날로그 디바이스가 끊기잖아요. 그럼 정기적으로 이 시스템이 브레이크다운 된 거예요. 이해가 되나요? However, the digital is 정기적으로 물론 연결이 되어 있긴 한데 이거는 전기가 아니고 그냥 단순히 프리퀀시예요. 이해가 되나요? 네, 알고 같습니다. 그래서 디지털 디바이스는 so digital device as you see there are two diff only there are two different actually there are many variations. However, the most common Digital devices that you work on, 
almost all devices only work with five volt or 3.3 volt. What does that mean then? This is design pattern. If you have a software object OOP, it's design pattern. So you probably might learn object-oriented design and their design pattern. And it is known as encapsulation. <laughs> what, is the, what is the benefit of using encapsulation in OOP? The reason why we teach this physical computing is that our world is that we live in an analog world, but this is all digitalized. However, since we use this world, the benefit, the kind of the characteristic, the features of all software computer programming, now digital world is a kind of like become similar to the software world. Now, kind of that's why it this kind of so called this twin world is coming out because this world is kind of coming towards uh, this kind of computer world. Because everything in real world is controlled by digital devices. And now the character of this physical world is now become similar to the characteristic of software. We some of software처럼 이게 디지털 특성이 변해가고 있어요. 이게 예전에는 어떤 어떤 본질들이 디지털 세상을 바꿔가고 있는 거예요. 아직 모르겠죠. So in the kind of so 숙제로 줄까? <laughs> okay, so this is assignment. Think about it. What is the benefit of, of the uh, the benefit of using digital devices compared to the analog devices? So there is no really condensant condensed light or fluorescent light anymore in this day. 여러분, 형광등이나 백열등 집에 아직 있는 사람 있어요? 있을 수 있죠. <laughs> so, some of you may have candescent light or fluorescent light at your home, but if you actually take a look at the inside of it, it may be LED inside, packaged with kind of adaptable to incandescent light or fluorescent light. 그러니까 여러분들 요새 나오는 등들을 보면 안에는 LED 칩인데 이게 백열등이나 그 형광등 패키지로 해놔서 그 옛날에 그 하드웨어를 바꿀 수 없는 오래된 집들을 위해서 갈아 낄수 있도록 해놨어요. However, now the whole world is and then even all the cars, you know, all the cars or I mean cars is a one of the most important probably then one of the most dominant product that represent analog world. Because the wheel steering is connected to using rack and gears or rack and pinions, and it is connected to so your steering wheel is connected to front tires, and it's kind of mechanically controlled by it. However, these days, no recent cars are mechanically connected between steering wheel and front tire. How they connect it? This steering wheel has a sensor reading the angle or kind of speed of rotation. And this reading the sensor of steering wheel is so simply transferred to another computer that controlled the rotation of car. And actually simply it is digitally connected. And the brake system or acceleration system in your car uh, used to be connected by wires, electric kind of mechanical cables that controlling the amount of fuel that goes into your engine. And the brake system is connected to a so-called hydraulic system that pressing power of your foot is connected to pressing power of brake. So the more strongly you press your brake pedal, that more strongly break the wheel of it. But these days, these are all connected to simply sensors. And sensor read the location of your pedal. And then actually there's another electrified electric system that control the brake, uh, what is that? The brake, uh, what are the brake pedal? So you kind of simply control the brake pressing power, that's it. So they are all, everything is disconnected and or digitally reconnected. And actually the, the, the means of Arduino is simply represent this analogously disconnected, however, electrically, digitally connected world. 
And the other one is Arduino. So what does that mean by you're doing Arduino project? It's creating a new physical world that is disconnected, but in, disconnected analogously and reconnected digitally. So the light is supposed to be, you have to go to the light switch and turn it off with your finger. But now you can use smartphone to turn on and turn off your light. And now, even though under the lighting, even these days, you have, if you have a smartphone and you are using Siri, the voice activated the text recognition, hey, please turn it on and off, then actually you will turn on and off by another AI. So these are actually the key ideas behind Arduinos or microcontrollers, not learning about the simply blink or fading. It's just really kind of superficial thing. However, you as a post student, you need to learn about this kind of, what does that mean by digital world and physical world and the meaning of all this digital world and physical world are reconnected. So that's why MIT Media Lab called these two words as bits and atoms. Bits represent the world of digital, atoms represent the world of really physical object. And these two bits and atoms, they are converged together and become one convergence space. Yeah. You'll get all, this is more important concept behind it, not, not the others. The coding is just nothing. But actually the Arduino tutorial, there's really, these days, really there's nothing to teach, I have to say. So let's kind of, let's go through, so I can finish Arduino in 10 minutes. <laughs> So let's finish it. <laughs> so if you kind of go back to Blink, let's say that. So I told you that, so I told you, so it's just rem it's kind of like a understand that. So there are two words, digital word and analog word. And there's a digital input output and analog input output. All we have to do is simply reconnecting, which is basically mapping. Okay, so let's kind of take a look at this. So it kind of, so okay, let's kind of delete everything for now. Okay, so let's kind of fresh it. Uh, okay, so now I drag on Arduino and then I will just open a code and, the, uh, and then I will see both blocks and text. So here, uh, as you see that, if you see that a built-in LED is digital device, so it can be turned high or low, but it'll just wait and wait. So if you just simply start simulation, the built-in LED will blink on and off. So this is simply controlling this server. And if you take a look at code, again, all pins can be used either input device or output device. So you have to set up as an output device or input device and this server, this is almost nothing. So instead of using this, you can actually, if you want to use other pins for now, Let's say that uh, you can use either, so I'm going to use pin 13. Uh, let's just use pin 10, pin 10 to high. And then I just replace this one. Uh, and then I just use wait one second. And then I just use set pin 0, 10 as low. And then I just need this one. And I just need this one. So now this one, we are going to use pin 10 instead of built in LED. So in this case, let's kind of use them as hardware. So now I, I will have Arduino here and then I'll just drag a, a, a breadboard. So something you need to remember about breadboard is that this one is horizontally, they are all electrically connected. So these top one is horizontally connected or the bottom one is horizontally connected, but in the middle, they are vertically connected. And then another one is that these two five pins are disconnected each other something you need to understand. And then actually let's say that I want to use one LED. Where is LED? So there's one LED. So make sure that please connect this one because they, these five pins are vertically connected, vertically connected but horizontally disconnected. If you do this and then if you, let's say that if you connect this, basically you are connecting in one electric signal. So do not, if you do not rotate, connect like this. And then here, if you, uh, the all electric devices are divided into another two categories. One is so-called polarity and another called 
do not have polarity. 그러니까 극성이 있는 디바이스와 극성이 없는 디바이스로 나누는데 if there is no polarity, you can connect either way. But if there is a polarity, for example, register, register do not have any polarity, meaning that you can actually reverse its connection. A potentiometer do not have also polarity, but it actually has a directionality. So if you want to connect in one way from uh, ground to five volt, you have to follow that rule, but you can still reverse it. Okay. And the switch do not have polarity, capacity do not have polarity. However, battery or sen some sensors, DC motors, they have polarities. So be careful about this polarity issue. So if you, if, when you have a DC motor, if you connect one to ground and the other five volt, if you reverse it, even though, so it has a uh, uh, directionality, so it will kind of uh, rotate in a, on, another way. And, but if you have transistor or L LED or diode, all these things have actually polarity, meaning that it have a very different characteristic if it is reversed. One of the example is if you see diode uh, chart, very typical diode look like this. As, so if it is connected in a it, in a right polarity, it will kind of have it will do not work until certain threshold voltage, and then it will work kind of linearly work, and then sort if you kind of go to extend higher voltage, it just kind of it is just work like an electric cable. But when you reverse it, it works like a resistor. However, if it goes to negative higher voltage, it breaks down, meaning that it becomes another electric circuit. So uh, many, what it means by it has a polarity, it simply say that it doesn't work. No, it did work. However, it did have something different characteristic. Uh, okay, so that's the thing you need to remember. No. Okay, so here's the thing. So I simply connect, so anode and there's a cathode, and actually anode, uh, it's kind of a little bit confusing. Anode is you can need to go to plus, so I connect it to 10, and then cathode is minus, and then if you see, I'll connect it to ground. Uh, but if you use uh, Korean language, uh, Tinkercad, you just simply say which one is plus and which one is minus. For, for now, remember the anode, Something sounds like add is plus and the other is minus. So if it is connected to 10, go back to code. If it is 10 on off and then you simulate it, so it will blink. So that's it. Uh, so now let's kind of work. So, and then one of the, uh, let's work on PWM, which you can work it on like analog device. So let's say that if you have the pin 10 is three, and then I just delete everything. So uh, let's say that pin 10 is connected here. Now I re I'll delete this one. Now we connect it to pin, instead of pin 10, I just use pin 11 because it, this one is closer. So I just connect to pin 11. So let's say that uh, if you, now it is set to zero, if I simulate it, start simulate it, nothing will turn on. However, if I change to 100, it probably, right little bit. Ah, oh, I, I set it to pin three. So I changed to pin 11. If I start simulation, it just bright like this. If I change it to 255, I don't know if the simulation will work really like it. Yeah, it's a little bit, the difference is slightly changed. So you can work as a um, analog uh, device. And if you wanna use it, you need to use for loop. I think there is for loop here. So let's say that we are going to use this and then set 11, 10, 10 here, and then let's wait uh, and then uh, repeat just to, uh, okay, I'll just repeat, instead of repeat this, I'll just repeat. I just kind of let's say 255 and set pin to here. And I just use a variable, create a variable. I just say name is V just for now. And then this V will be here and at the beginning set V to zero. And then whenever you do this, I just V by zero one. So what it means is at first time I'll set the value V as one. So what it means, if you take a look at about this one, there's a counter, V is set as zero. 
and it will repeat 250 times and the V will be increased one at a time. It will, it, this will be very fast. So I'll just wait one second each time. Okay, so now if you do that, it is going to brighter, brighter and brighter and brighter. I think it's too, uh, let's change this one 0 0.1 second and then let's restart. So this one very slightly just dim out. And if you want to reverse it, you know that you can just, if you do, if you can actually set it as 255 and then you can set it as minus one, then at the beginning, you do we have the brightest light and if you reverse it, then it just kind of, it will become darker and darker. So the code is here. So th this one is you kind of learn digital output and analog output. If you want to use a sensor, sensor is kind of tricky, however, because this one really does not have a physical uh, sensors, but le let's kind of use it. So go to input. So let's say digital pin zero is here. Uh, and then output, is there any uh, print? Okay, so there is a print serial monitor. If you use hello world with new line, if you just simply Start simulation. Where is the simulator? Uh, it's print to serial mode, hello world with new line. Uh, I send to. Uh, I just forgot how to simulate it. Let's see, note to serial for hello world. So where can I see? text. Oh, uh, serial monitor is here. Okay, so I double click it and you will say hello world is keep repeating. So now uh, I will read the digital pin zero instead. So now if I simulate again, so that's one. What it means is that, that zero has actually high voltage. Now I've connected this one ground to, okay, I'll stop simulation. And I connect ground to pin zero. Okay, then let's see code. So what it means is that it will read the value from pin zero, and this one is connected it, but connected to ground, which will offer zero voltage, then the output will become zero because ground is connected. And then interesting thing is what happened, and then if I connect it to, so I delete it, and if I connect five volt to zero, and then if I simulate one more time, let's see code. One is actually coming out, meaning that five volt is high. But the interesting thing now is that what if I connect 3.20? Can you guess what will happen? Can you imagine this was, so the output will be zero or one? Can you guess? So raise up, it will be zero. Raise up, it will be one. If you think the result will be one. <laughs> okay, so if I take a look at it, this will shoot out zero. So what that means is that internally, it has a digital sensor inside of microcontroller. And if a voltage is higher than 2.5, then probably it will be one and probably lower than 2.5, it will be zero. So let's, so this is how to use digital sensor. And let's kind of use probably input and then oh, let's use one more time, print to serial monitor. Let's say that our input is actually read analog pin zero. And let's kind of connect it that what if, oh, oh. So we have a code here. So now I'm kind of connect, instead of doing that, I connect ground to pin A0. So probably A0 is connect to ground. So it's supposed to be that the value is supposed to be, zero. So zero is coming. What if I connect to five to, so I delete it. 
and then I connect five to A0, and then the output supposed to be 1023. So this is the maximum value. And then as you guess, okay, let's now, let's have a quick mass contest. What could be the value if I connect to 3.3 volt? Ishan? <laughs> what will be the value if I connect 3.3 to A0? So kind of, so, uh, okay, so, uh, okay, so then let's kind of take a, let's develop a very simple system. So let's say that uh, we have input, which is using A0, and then we are connecting this one to output. But before doing that, uh, go to control, if, and then math, and then we can compare it. If A0 is lower than, uh, what was that? 600, so 700. And then what we are going to do is set pin zero. Let's say pin now is connected to 11 to high. So this one is only turn the LED on. And, and then you can actually take a look at this code. If a value is lower than 700, it will turn high and actually it will shoot out the value. So you can actually connect input and output device. So uh, I think, uh, I hope you have your phone on your own, but this, uh, okay, let's, should I have one more? So this is how to, and then you can actually see, a uh, really interesting thing is that you can simply copy this code and then you can copy it to Arduino and then you can actually physically really upload this code to uh, your own Arduino. So you can do almost anything uh, using this one. Uh, what else? So we learn all the output, uh, set built-in high, low. Oh, and then actually you can make a speaker. Oh, oh, oh let's work on a solver. Okay, I didn't cover this one. So this is what we get. So, and then in the mathematics, actually we learn uh, constant. I will kind of cover this one a little bit later. Let's do it. Let's go to something easier one and more intuitive. So in the output, we just so far, we worked on uh, LED, but we can actually work on motor. And I'll a little bit talk about motor from now on. So uh, how many motors did you work before? Anyone who worked with motor before? 혹시 모터 써본 사람? Even before you come to college. So, 써본 모터는 써본 적 있습니다. Okay, so you 써본 모터. How about DC motor? Anyone use the DC motor? DC motor is one of the popular one. Any elementary school student work in making a boat, helicopter, or DC motor. 한 번도 안 써봤어요? DC, 그러니까 what else are left? DC motor, 서버 motor, what's are left? Stepper motor is actually another kind. So actually there are many, many different motors. However, these three are the most uh, popular three types of motors. So this, what is a DC motor then? Yeah, simply connect it and it will just rotate, that's it. So for DC motor, uh, let's just see it as a DC motor. And I'll, but let's just a little bit talk about it. So. So DC motor is just simply magnet and electric cable. So if you connect it, it just rotate. If you connect it in a reverse direction, it will rotate reverse direction. So that's the DC motor. What is the benefit of using DC motor? And then there are two kinds of DC motor, brushless and brushed DC motor. And brush means actually the kind of the core in the middle is actually brush. Uh, actually, so, uh, but actually, so you actually uh, in uh, recently, you probably see a lot of brushless motors. Do you remember, do you, can you guess where do you see brushless motor? You don't know my service, wait. Drone uses this brushless motor. 
So what is the benefit of using DC motor? And all the airplane propellers, it used to use or, or kind of motorized boat, boat. It all uses, or do you, who, do you know Hoover? <laughs> Hoover. Uber boat. So these are actually another important context. What we use a lot of motors. So So now let's see that Uber boat. And then DC motor. So DC motor looked like this. And then what is the benefit of using this motor? Writing is not agitated, but really can help. This sentence it... So this is actually DC motor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. DC motor is almost everywhere. Yeah, all the handle yeah. tools, drills, yeah, or yeah. screwdriver, yeah. they all use this actually DC motor. The windings can hear and the iron core essentially form an electromagnet. And you work, they melt the paper. Any good one? So, where do you want to use and where do you, you don't want to use DC motor actually? Both, and then actually many fans actually use this DC motor too, the ceiling fan. DC motor is not DC motor. I will be able to start. So 36 types of DC motors. Wow. And basically, you probably recognize here that what does the diameter, the sizes of diameter represent, do you think? What does the size of represent? I believe that also motor uh, you can represent a motor depending on wattage. What it means is the, the electric power consumption rate. Also, you can divide motor using horsepower, meaning the power of motor. Or you can also, the more precise version is so-called torque. Torque is actually rotating power. But can you identify when do you use DC motor? DC motor는 힘이 특정 스피드에 올라갔을 때 힘을 많이 쓰죠. So oh, DC motor, this is conditional. When the rotation of a motor reach the full speed, it can actually have a lot of power. However, the, the, the disadvantage of DC motor is that when it does not reach the full speed, it does not have really the power to transfer. And another, and, and what is the benefit of, of using this motor? It is simple. You can just con connect plus and minus or power source and ground and that's it. If you reverse it, it will change the direction. So this is the simplest control. However, the position is very difficult to control. Actually, it's actually so almost impossible to control the position of it. So to actually kind of to develop or to make a motor that actually uh, uh, cover the disadvantage of this motor is so-called sobo motor and stepper motor. And sobo motor is kind of somewhere between DC motor and stepper motor. So sobo motor is actually uh, many students work with uh, their RC car. 
So uh, uh, this servo motor just walk, look like this. So the benefit of <laughs> Can you imagine a world without servos or a brush usually offered in either plastic? So the inside of it is servo. Most high end. The servo is one one. I will cover more if you see so about the servo. Okay, so then transmitters will actually allow you to. Uh, I'll just take a look at those images. Okay, so servo is developed. Like the servo is uh, is actually use a DC motor with uh, actually a sensor. And then it's a kind of, many servo, servo motor has a microcontroller inside. So it's kind of like feedback system. Servo is a kind of a kind of feedback system with sensor and a motor to control it, to, to more precisely controlling the position of a motor. So actually you can control the servo motor depending on it. However, you can actually controlling its angle of it. And in general, servo motor is divided into two categories. One is a standard servo, and the other is continuous servo. So continuous servo, by its name, it will rotate forever, and then you can actually con uh, control the location of it continuously. But standard servo only works minus 180 to maximum 180 total 3060. But actually, in general, it is smaller than 3060. But actually, the whole purpose is uh, it actually you want to control the angle of it. That's why servo motor is mainly uh, infrequently used RC cars, uh, the kind of the uh, at the front wheel, front uh, front tires. And stepper motors is actually developed to really more precisely control the position of it. However, stepper motor uh, do not have a sensor, so you even if you can control the location of it. However, you don't know where it is located. So stepper motor is the one of the most precisely controlled position. However, you need additional device to know where it is. So basically all the CNC machine and robot arms and 3D printer, they all use stepper motors. However, there are common procedure, procedures to use a machine that have stepper motor inside. 여러분 스테퍼 모터가 달린 모든 기기는 이걸 해야 돼요. 이게 뭘까요? So what is the procedure? The first procedure that everybody must go through to use a machine that has a stepper motor inside. 이게 뭘까요? <laughs> who didn't say so far at all? <laughs> 3D printer. We have to do this one before you use a 3D printer. Three D print how many times about sorry Pyongmu? Okay. 3D printer Benchon. So what happened if you turn on a 3D printer? What does it do? Uh, but what as soon as you turn a 3D printer on, it does do something specific thing. Or we, whenever ah. you. 가장 모서리로 이동하고 아, 나서. 맞아요, 맞아요. 왜 그거 거기 가겠어요? 어, 네. 어, 이슈한은 한국말로 했는데 알아들었어. 이슈한 loved it even Woodin said something Korean. <laughs> so Ishan, did you tell uh, him what did you understand? What did you understand from his Korean? <laughs> um, I think he said that. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I think he said that there's sun, suns, and there's like shaking movement. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> so, 여러분, 3D 프린터 딱 키면 얘가 제일 구석으로 가요. 왜 그러냐면, so whenever you turn on a 3D printer, or whenever you start a 3D printer, it goes to the left end or bottom end or the beginning of it because it check its position. 
Well, stepper motor do not have a sensor. It need to check its position whenever it starts its kind of operation. But uh, what happens if you turn on a device a, a servo motor has? Servo motor is what? Is that only students know who actually play with our RC car before knows this uh, characteristic uh, uh, movement of servo motor. Servo motor so servo motor knows where it is located. So servo motor, what does a servo motor do as soon as you turn on it? Turn it on. It find its position immediately. Yeah, it, it knows where it is it. So actually it, it kind of correct its position at the zero zero location. Uh, many, many, you are going to do that too if you use sub monitor. But it does, it does done by software programming way. So many device who use a sub motor, motor, it correct its location at zero zero. So if you turn on any machine with sub motor, it just mm, 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 and it just kind of stay still because it knows it. Uh, so uh, think so. Okay. So that's it for today. That three different motors. So uh, think and then actually because when you develop your project. Definitely, you will have a chance that you have to decide, oh, should I buy a DC motor or should I buy a sub motor or should I buy a stepper motor? Will be your kind of first challenging question, depending on your application. Okay, that's it for today and see you on Wednesday. Uh, and then have fun with the, uh, it used to have all the packages waiting and buy all the sensors and uh, motors. But if you're using this, uh, Tinkercat, uh, you just you can just learn by yourself, and there is the, this one is so amazing. So have fun with the, all the kind of virtual hardwares and sensors and motors, and then see you on Wednesday. 네, 여기까지입니다. Oh, do you have any questions so far? 혹시 대면으로 수업을 아 맞다. 변경을 하죠? 대면 언제부터지? 다음 주부터 아닌가요? So next Monday we are switching to uh, on tech. Tech, tech education. So, so I will probably announce this, uh, this Wednesday. However, for the next, 근데 여러분 언제 와요? When do you come to school? 저는 지금 학교에 와 있는 상태입니다. 혹시 지금 학교에 와 있는 사람? 이이션 is in school and 우진이는? 네, 저도 학교에 있습니다. 네, 저도 학교입니다. 어 그래? 언제 왔어요, 다들? 말하지. <웃음> why didn't tell? Why didn't you tell me? <웃음> 이번 이번 주말에 왔습니다. 아 어저께 그저께. 네. 아, but I think but we need a one uh, one week for your quarantine, I believe. So we have to prove that you're okay for this one week period. So let's so we will talk on Wednesday, but probably we'll meet uh, here in the maker maker space from the next Monday. So we'll have fun from next week. 네, 여기까지예요. 네, 수고 많으신다. 교수님 혹시 네. 다음 주가 중간고사 기간인데 아, 시험... 아 그럼 휴강이에요. <웃음> 아, 오케이. 오케이. <웃음> so next next week is actually midterm exam week, so we we supposed to not have any class during that week. 네, yeah, so so we have no class the next whole week, so we have no class 11th and 13th because of this is uh kind of school policy that on a midterm week, same week, we cannot have a class. Unfortunately, yes. All right, all right. 오고 싶, 오고 싶어요? <웃음> 막 수업하고 싶어 죽겠어요? Next week. <웃음> 네, 그럼 일단, okay, so that's it for today and see you on Wednesday. All right. 네, 수고 많으셨습니다. 감사합니다. 수고하셨습니다.